Clay Fighter, 63 and a third. Some games are so bad that when discussing a genre of games, they form the benchmark for an entire console. Clay Fighter 63 and a third was panned by critics in its release. It sold terribly to savvy console owners, and went from release date to bargain bin quicker than any other title I can remember. The previous generation of consoles had Clay Fighter games which were generally fun to play. The art style and animation was quite unique for its time, and I have generally positive memories of playing it with friends on my Super Nintendo. So it may surprise you to learn that this Clay Fighter game itself was never actually intended to land on Nintendo 64. The game was originally put into production to be a launch title for the Panasonic M2, which was due to be the 64-bit add-on to the 3DO console. The M2 eventually became its own console, but was thankfully canned before its release. With the new hardware from Panasonic dead in the water, Interplay needed to quickly move the game onto another system, and so with the N64 arriving, it was decided to move the game over to the N64 and also make a PlayStation version as well. This was actually easier for them to do than expected, as the development team found the N64 dev kit easier to work with than the Panasonic M2s. Clay Fighter 63 and the third contains 9 fighters to choose from the start, along with 3 extra hidden ones to unlock. Some of the classic characters from previous entries return, as well as new additions which are generally nicely done. To be fair the characters are perhaps the game's only strength. Personally I enjoyed the style and designs of them, and you should be able to find one that handles to your gameplay style. Interplay had been unhappy with the animation in Clay Fighter 2, and so they returned to Danger Productions who did this game's character models and stop animation under the direction of Interplay. Interplay then digitised the photographs and linked the animation together. The new console power meant that Interplay felt that they were finally delivering the look of the game they had wanted to achieve from the very first Clay Fighter that had been restricted by the 16-bit era's limitations. Perhaps the biggest problem with the game, and the reason for its negative reviews, is the thankfully abysmal gameplay. The animations in the game feel almost non-existent at times, and at other times your character will still be going through an animation cycle long after you've pulled off the move, and this gives your opponent the opportunity to dodge your attack and then smash lumps of clay out of you whilst you're stuck in what can seem like a never-ending set of moves. This is also worsened by the unresponsive controls. When fighting, you'll often get the feeling that you have no control over the on-screen action, as no matter what buttons you press, your character will barely react. Trying to pull off the combos which are essential in most fighting games is unfairly difficult, and instead your regular attacks do very little damage. All of these points combine together to leave you mashing buttons in the hope of beating your opponent. This sadly works very well. You'll have no problem taking down each opponent even in the game's hardest modes, and so once you've done this, and you've unlocked the additional characters, there really is no reason to ever play this game again. Looking at the positives though, there is something actually refreshing about the game. With so many fighting games trying to be ultra serious or violent, Clay Fighter serves up a dose of slapstick comedy that does have some laugh out loud moments. This mostly comes in the form of the game's audio, which is surprisingly good. Sure, the music is nothing to write home about, and generally consists of dramatic melodies which are attempting to create a sense of tension, but when combined with some amazing one-liners, it really doesn't fit or work. The voice cast for the game contains some of the who's who of voice acting for the time. Rob Paulson, Frank Welker, and Tress McNelly are joined by industry heavyweights like Dan Castellaneta of Simpsons fame and Michael the Voice Buffer, the boxing compere. Each character has between 30 and 40 unique lines of dialogue, which the characters will spurt out frequently during your battles. Some of them are irritating and overly repetitive, but seeing a chicken hurled across the screen whilst Cluck You is shouted out is very silly and prepubescent humour, but it really was what the designers were going for. Sadly though, the game never really perfects itself in any department. The addition of Earthworm Jim and Boogerman from other games can't entice me to recommend this game to anyone. It's a clunky fighting game which only sold about 60,000 copies, even months after its release, and it eventually led to the cancellation of the planned PlayStation version. But is Clay Fighter 63 and a third as bad as everyone makes out? As always, it's over to you, so let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and until next time.